This is going to be a quick video on power clips, how to make a almost like a style like you do it in Photoshop that you can pull in and kind of quickly use in CorelDRAW to edit and or kind of embellish some artwork that you're doing. Um, this example was done just kind of quick for a, for a racing thing and then I, I found that if you used it for different vectors and, and uh, objects and then also other logos you can very quickly illustrate something um, and you know just get the client something quick and then a lot of times it works for a variety depends on how it's built but uh, it's kind of a neat way but let's go ahead and do this real quick and we can look at it um, let's just type it out here and then we'll go ahead and control K and we'll go ahead and use, use a racing font here make it italicized we can go Control K and K. If you hit Control K twice, it breaks it down to a word first and then to the individual letters. And what you can do is you bring down the line here, and you can just kind of bring it down to that line. And you can do the same thing with the second letter here, so you can make sure you're pretty close to the same. And then we can kind of fill in the bottom here, make a piece, and then italicize that. So it's pretty even with our logo. And again, I'm just doing this quick. If you want an exact one, you'd actually draw a line here. You know, and make sure your piece lined up perfectly. Since I'm a little nitpicky, sometimes I'll do that, you know, just to make sure you're on the same line as the type. And then zoom back out. Um, grab this piece here and then drag it and you right click to duplicate it and if you hit control Q you convert it to a curve the advantage of that being you can just grab these nodes without adjusting the skew otherwise if you dragged it and enlarged it that way you would change the skew and so these two you can click here click here convert them to black no outline and then we'll just grab all this and control L makes it all one piece so I can change the color to whatever um, I like that and now racing we can find a font that'll work for that this one works pretty good we drag it out here um, occasionally you have to adjust the kerning to some of these fonts um, the space between the letters just because the, the letter the kerning gets a little messed up you just kind of click in there, hit the shape tool, and bump them together. A little extra work pays off because you you know it all blends kind of nice there. And this again this one me might control K and get the R just a hair bigger and tuck it down in there. And then you can kind of control Q and then merge it all together so it's all one piece. That way you don't get these weird overlaps you get sometimes. You may have seen that before. Um, one other thing to make it look a little racier is you can kind of drag these these out. You just drag your nodes out, kind of make an elongated dot there. Um, and I'll bring that a little closer just so it um, has a little more of a racing feel to it. And then that'll be tucked up eventually. But for now, we're going to just quickly kind of bring in that power clip now. Um, and you can see that. Now, I should still save that. I think it's still on the clipboard here. Let's see if we control V. Yeah, it brings in. This is a this is just an example of a, a style. It's similar to like a preset, but it, it, it works as a power clip. Now there's, there's a power clip piece inside and there's a there's a um, fade on top. So I can right click and drag it quickly, say copy fill, and then I can check where the fill's landing by hitting the interactive fill tool. You can kind of see where the dark is and the light there. And you know, and you can always go back in and edit it, of course, hit the fountain fill if you want this to be deeper red for instance hit others and you can always make it a little more saturated there you know if you add a little saturation to it maybe it'll get a little deeper on the bottom that might be kind of nice and then leave it red on the top if you don't have enough red on some of your lowercase letters that's where you would adjust this interactive fill tool and bring it down just a little bit and if I hold the the shift key it'll hold to um, dimension Meaning that I won't go off dimension as easy. It'll stay 90 degrees easier for me to adjust this fill a little bit, just like that. And now what we want to do 
as we're going to kind of bring this power clip into here. So you click this and you hit FX clone and then you see power clip option here and then you click on that. Now you won't see anything in this in X5 because in previous versions of Corel, sometimes it would pop the power clip right in the center. In X5, it puts it in the same location as the other power clip, so it'll be right here. But if you hit Control and then you click there, you'll see that there's your power clip. And in this case, we're going to change the direction anyways. And we want to kind of bring it down in size maybe a little bit. You know, I want to kind of have it flaming across my letters, but I don't want that red edge to be too visible there. I'm not going to worry about it too much because I can always kind of edit that if I need to inside the power clip, but, uh, and I'll show you how to do that in a minute. Um, but we can kind of make this, bring that up here, just so it's flaming into my letters. So I want it to kind of, I want some of the yellow to be in the lowercase letters. This can be like that and be all yellow. That's fine there. That's okay there. I'll show you how to edit that out in a minute. A couple different ways of doing that. I mean, one of my favorite ways really is to just try to avoid it by doing this, and occasionally you can just drag it over. So your overlap is actually in between where you have a gap, um, but you can, if you need to, actually go in there and edit it pretty easy too. In this case, it actually lands perfectly because it lands there. There is a little bit here, but I'll show you that's really easy to fix because all you really do is just take a little piece, because all you're going to see is the yellow. You're just going to take a little piece and you're just going to make that yellow with no outline. And you can see how nice that kind of covers that up. And then you're pretty much done with your power clip here. you got your power clip ready to go. Hit the, um, hit the control key and click off of any objects and you go back out. And you see you've already got your flames kind of looking, looking pretty good there. And I don't need that anymore. And now what I may want to do, depends on how the power clip falls, but what I may want to do is actually edit this slightly to bring up the drama a little bit by bringing that darkness up a little higher. You can see and that way your flames will pop out a little more. Just like that. And now we can put a finishing touch on this design here. We'll save it. Obviously you always want to save your work, right? And then uh, click here and we'll just do real quick, we'll do like a three point um, Outline, maybe we'll go a little bigger than that. We'll go five. Go OK. And you can kind of see how that that's working there. And then we'll take an outside contour of it. Now, I always control save before I do an outside contour, but let's go ahead and go to one point outside contour. Hit apply. Yeah, and always save first because it may have an issue. You never know what'll happen. And then control, uh, control K to break them apart. So you got this extra piece here. Roll page down. You don't need the outline on that. And then the inside outline, we're just going to change to white. And I may shrink it just a little bit because it's cutting in there just a little bit too much. We don't need five, maybe go to three. We get a nice outline, but then just leave that and then click your border. And we just want to put in a real quick metallic looking uh, little fade here. We'll just make it real quick white. We need another white. This is a real quick way to make a little uh, metallic looking fill. We won't go totally black in the middle, but then you get right about here, and then white at the bottom. And we don't need an edge pad, because that'll push the bottom and top together too much. We'll kind of make this this way. Bring these up. There you go. That'll work. I say OK. And then it kind of gives me that chrome looking. This can be blue with, uh, let's do, we'll do four point, just make it white like that. This is going to kind of cut into the logo a little bit, you can stretch it out a little more. And then we take this, control D, page down, three hits there, three hits there, and then we finish it up. We're going to go on a black shirt with it. And you can kind of see what it looked like. We'll go control page down, fill it with black. So that's a quick way to get kind of a little bit. Now if you wanted a little extra dimension, you can always control D, duplicate, put a page down, and then make your logo pop out 
with a little bit of, I just filled it with black and also put a black outline around it, and then it kind of pops it from the background a little bit. You can see that. Gives you a little bit of extra pop there. On a screen printed shirt, sometimes maybe you wouldn't do that. I don't know if it would cause you some problems, but uh, it kind of looks cool here. So we'll go ahead and leave it, and then you might show that to the client um, and just get some feedback from them. But that's a real quick way to get uh, a nice kind of fill and graphic and layout that you can almost use as a preset and drag into another image if you needed some a background graphic or a quick new logo to, to use.